I'm telling you, if, if it's a hamburger, that it's got to be thoroughly cooked. And if you want your steak rare, they warn you about it. Sometimes there's even a warning in the menu. Because they don't want the liability. If they serve you meat that's undercooked and you get sick from it, you know, it has, it, it, you'd sue them, they'd be out of business. So anyway, the particular strain of E. coli that caused a lot of the trouble is E. coli 0157H7. So this is a little, let me fix, so this is a colon, okay? <coughs> o stands for a particular antigen. And the H stands for another particular antigen. And these are antigens that they use to identify this bacteria, and it's related to the toxins they produce. So see, there's two different antigens that are significant that uh, identify this particular strain of E. coli. And it produces such a bad toxin that it can make your kidney shut down. And it's called hemolytic uremic syndrome. I can write that on the board for you. Hemolytic, that doesn't sound Resistant. good, like destroy blood cells, right? Hemolytic uremic, which is your kidneys, your urea, kidney, right? Uremic syndrome, H-U-S. <coughs> People die when their kidneys shut down. It was totally bad news. Uh, the O is an oligosaccharide antigen. Remember, oligosaccharide is kind of like a polysaccharide, and uh, remember we talked about the outer membrane can have these lipidy poly, uh, lipopolysaccharides and stuff like that, that's toxin. And the H is the antigen that stands for the hemolytic toxin. So that's how they identify it. Okay, there's one example of gram-negative food infection. You might not get this particular strain of E. coli, but if you do ingest E. coli from your meat, or even <coughs> from food contamination, somebody doesn't have good hygiene and contaminates your food, and remember tapeworms, yeah. wash your hands. You can even transmit tapeworms. If you have tapeworms, and you're passing those eggs in your feces, and you handle yourself unhygienically, and then prepare food for someone, they're swallowing tapeworm eggs. Yummy. Which is a whole different kind of thing. <laughs> it's not food infection. Okay, so now let's talk about salmonella. Let's just talk about salmonella enteritis for the time being. So, uh, did you ever have Caesar salad dressing made from the authentic recipe? They use raw egg. So, remember I said chickens have one hole for everything? It's called a cloaca. Chickens have a cloaca. Cloaca is like the combination of a vagina, a urethra, and an anus all at once. It's just one big hole. And everything, the egg comes through, the poop comes through. So it's possible the poop could get on the egg. So you make your salad dressing, and when you do, you little piece of shell drops in there and you pick the shell out or whatever, or there's poop on the shell and somehow the egg gets on and you put it in a salad dressing and you mix up your salad dressing and it's early in the morning and the, the lunchtime rush crowd doesn't come until at least 11.30 and by now your salad dressing has had chance for the bacteria to multiply in it. So then if you eat the salad dressing, you possibly ingest <laughs> enough microbes to resist your digestive enzymes and start colonizing your digestive tract. Salmonella is particularly heinous. There was a BBC uh, documentary program about it, and they showed how uh, this guy actually ate uh, chicken. The chicken itself was undercooked, and so the salmonella bacteria were on the chicken. So you could get it from the egg, or you could get it from the chicken meat. Well, he... He's like a photographer, and he's at work one day, and all of a sudden he feels it start to happen, the diarrhea. So he gets in his little European car, and he drives all the way home, and he runs in the front door straight to the bathroom and slams the door, and his wife's like, honey, is that you? Did you come home from work early? And he's like, leave me alone. <laughs> She's like, what's going on in there? Are you okay? He's like, leave me alone. <laughs> so funny. 
yeah, the squirts from the salmonella. But it took a little while for it to catch up with him. It took a few days. He had eaten dinner at, of all places, the chicken farmer's house. They invited him for dinner because he was doing a calendar for their company. Anyways, so um, what happens with salmonella bacteria, when they get in your digestive tract, first of all, they can survive. And your macrophages go after them, and they let the macrophage engulf them, and then they replicate inside your macrophages. <laughs> And then when there's a high number of them, they burst out of the macrophage. And then your body's immune response is like, holy crap, they're producing toxins and irritants to your bowels and everything. And your immune system and the toxins also, of course, cause you to flush them out. <laughs> you have diarrhea, right? But why is that good for the bacteria? Because if you have messy diarrhea coming out, now the germs are exposed and new people can pick them up and get sick. So the germ has a way of getting to new hosts by causing you to have diarrhea. But the diarrhea is actually your immune system's response to the germ. Yeah. Kind of a full circle. Isn't that weird? Okay. Anyway, so uh, that salmonella enteritis causes gastroenteritis or enteritis. Your bowels are inflamed, bad diarrhea. Okay, when we do our unknowns in lab, you're going to get uh, enteric bacteria. You're going to get Escherichia is going to be one, Salmonella is going to be one. You're like, well, Salmonella typhi is the one that causes typhoid fever. This one causes enteritis, but this one causes a more severe disease, typhoid fever. It's similar to food poisoning. Uh, my grandma got it in the olden days from drinking well from a contaminated, uh, drinking water from a contaminated well. Didn't they used to love people uh, with typhoid fever? Typhoid Mary. Yeah. Yeah. Go they, ahead. They uh, put them in an insane hospital, but they weren't so lovely back then. Yeah. To get them out of the public because they could spread it to other people. And nowadays, uh, even people that have typhoid in their system, but they're not really sick from it, they're just carriers, they're allowed to work in the healthcare industry. But they are kind of monitored and they have to be careful about their hygiene in the food industry. But it used to be they wouldn't let them work in the food industry because you could spread it to other people. There was actually just a recall a couple of days ago on a, some chicken products we sold at Sam's Club. Uh, for salmonella, makes you wonder which type it was. I don't think it was typhoid, I think it was the enteritis one. You heard about it? Uh, no, I didn't, but I would think it was the enteritis one. You never know. But uh, the typhoid, you heard of typhoid Mary? Mm -hmm. Typhoid Mary was a, a cook. That's what she did for a living. She worked for families, cooking for them, maybe keeping house a little bit. And she was a carrier of vector. She was a vector of typhoid fever. She was a reservoir of typhoid fever. So a reservoir is a source of infection. It could be a contaminated um, food supply. It could be a contaminated water source. It could be a, a population of animals that carry, like a population of animals that carries rabies would be a rabies reservoir. So a reservoir is a source of, of the germs. So typhoid Mary is considered a reservoir. She's also considered a vector because she spread the disease. And she's considered a carrier because although she had the germs in her system, she didn't actually get sick herself. So some people can carry typhoid but not get sick from it. They think that she had a population of it living in her gallbladder. So if she maybe coughed up some spit and wiped it and didn't wash her hands, or if she defecated and didn't wash her hands properly and then cooked for a family, then she spread it to the family. So the one by one, the members of the family died and Typhoid Mary had to get a new job. So she went out and she got hired by another family and she killed them off. And then she went out and got hired by another family and started killing them off. Well, pretty soon, not too soon, but after a while, because remember epidemiology is not the you know, most sophisticated science in those days. The authorities kind of figured out that maybe typhoid Mary's causing these families to die, because we've seen three families already that dropped dead and she worked for them. So 
They wanted her to stop working, but she wouldn't. She refused to believe that there was anything wrong with her because she was not sick. And she's like, that's not fair. You're going to tell me I can't work? This is what I do. I care for families. I cook for families. That's my profession. i got to go to work. i got to earn a living. Are you going to deprive me of earning a living? And they're like, absolutely. You're going to jail. And they locked her up. They put her in jail. And then some people were against it because they said, that's not fair to blame it on typhoid Mary because typhoid was actually a pretty common disease. A lot of people had it. So the people in the family she worked for could have gotten it from other places, not from typhoid Mary. So that was kind of a big deal then, but they did. They kept her in jail so she wouldn't go to work anymore. I thought that uh, typhoid fever is actually just a cause of sanity, though. I think I've well, heard some yeah. documentary about that like someone with typhoid fever led to the production of the first antipsychotic for the Yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know. That'd be interesting if you can find that. I'd like to read it. That'd be interesting. But they do know nowadays, or at least kind of start to accept nowadays, that when you're infected with bacteria, it affects your mind. There is some effect on your on your psyche when you have an infection. So, okay. So let's talk about typhi and typhimurium. So Salmonella typhi, this is the one that causes typhoid fever. There's another strain called Salmonella typhimurium. And this one is not as bad as typhoid fever, but it's also a pathogen and you'll also get those gastrointestinal symptoms and stuff. But the reason why I bring it up is because in lab, some of you are going to get a species of salmonella, but the species of salmonella you're going to get is salmonella typhi. And you're like, okay, even so, it causes gastroenteritis.